This presentation is about representing data in a geographic information system. We'll talk uh, somewhat about data types, both vector and raster, the complications and limitations of representing the real world in spatial data sets, and finally at the end of this we'll begin to talk somewhat about uh, the land use data type, which will be the uh, focus of your exercise this week. The world is an infinitely complex place. There is uh, an infinite amount of information and detail um, that makes up our world, and we can't capture all of that detail or information in a spatial data set without it being infinitely large and infinitely costly to to create, so we need to um, simplify in some way. So a database represents a limited view of reality. Hopefully, however, it captures all the information that we need in order to carry out the uh, analysis that we want to do and answer the questions that we want to do. Um, a database can contain really uh, two different types of data. If we look at it in one, in one looked at in one way, um, a GIS database can contain representations of real objects such as houses, roads, etc., and digital representations of fictitious or invented or um, artificial um, items. Um, such as political boundaries, which don't really exist in nature. However, they're an important part of the uh, important part of data sets and analysis in many cases. Another dichotomy, or two, being able to split into two ways that we deal with in GIS data is um, making the distinction between data sets that are or data types that are discrete and data types that are continuous. Example of a discrete data set is a house. The footprint of a house is a very clearly defined. It's either uh, an air, um, you're either inside of a house or not in a house. Um, an exa another example, a uh, town boundary is a discrete data or a discrete concept. One is either inside of the town of Sweden or not in the town of Sweden. Um, these are much easier to represent than data sets that are continuous, such as temperature or elevation or um, forest cover, which can vary continuously over space and don't have clear boundaries. As an example, I've got some diagrams here, one that shows uh, a reality in which um, on the left-hand picture, the left of the left-hand picture, shows the trees um, that are very dense. Toward the middle of the left-hand picture, trees are modest, and toward the right, trees are sparse. Well, that's, that's a reality. That's a continually varying data, the um, density of trees. Um, it is possible to uh, represent that data in a number of ways. Often what's done is a threshold is determined, and anything that exceeds that threshold is called forest, in this case, and anything that doesn't reach that threshold is called non-forest. So in this case, however, there are open spaces inside the forest polygon, and there are, um, there are open spaces inside the forest polygon, and there are trees within the non-forest polygon, but that's just the complications that we have to deal with. Um, there are two essential types of data structures in GIS, and these are two different worlds of GIS data, and they can be displayed together, but they're fundamentally different, and it is not, not all analyses, in fact, relatively few analyses can mix vector and raster data. Vector data is data representations that are made up of geometric figures, lines, points, and polygons. And in this case, we have polygons and representing houses, road surfaces, and lines representing contours. And that is called vector data, data that's represented as points, polygons, and lines. The other world of data 
types in GIS is called raster data in which the data is represented by um, small um, pixel elements and a study area is chopped into um, small usually um, square elements and each element has a single individual value this is a very the one on the uh, left is a very crude um, raster data set at a very poor resolution um, which may show land use the two in the middle are another form of raster data these are images and um, just like any image on a monitor or a newspaper or anything um, images are just made up of picture elements or pixels in this case we call them raster elements and each one of them has a distinct color and all together um, those colors at each element or shades of black and white shades of gray um, also would would, um, would create to us what we perceive as an image another example of raster data is uh, is elevations and in this case every tiny element every small element within this study area has an individual um, elevation those elevations in this case are being represented visually with a different color for each different value and what we can see here is what's called the digital elevation model or a DEM it's actually a topographic map um, as I said a vector data model um, lines points polygons are, are the uh, are the building blocks of vector data sets um, it's another representation um, it is, uh, I'm going to skip this slide um, for the time being and come back to these. Anybody who wants to linger on this for a minute or two might learn something from it. Uh, the same from this slide. I need to keep this under uh, a certain length to fit into uh, YouTube. Um, the same um, information can be recorded or can be stored in both rest raster and data format a raster and vector format. Um, this this uh, shows how a point is poorly translated into a raster. We all remember that a point has no actual area. A line is uh, translated into a row of cells and a polygon into a group of cells. Um, in each case of data that we want to represent there are trade-offs including the one you can see here about which data representation to choose. Um, the, uh, day, I'd like to drift in this presentation toward the raster data model. You can see here um, an example, and again, you can, you're able to linger uh, and use the stop button in YouTube to uh, look at slides a little longer, so I will speak through them quickly. You can even um, go backwards and repeat a little bit on the slide. Um, in the raster data model, again, every single cell has an individual value in this case each individual value is represented by colors and the overall box here is uh, the, the, all, the uh, complete study area. Um, each of those pixels is referenced by an XY coordinate on some sort of a coordinate system as you see in the lower part of this picture. Um, rasters do have something called an attribute table and an attribute table um, is in the case of a raster is a summary of the um, different values that are found within a raster data set and how many of each of them are found so what this is telling us is that raster um, number raster uh, the, the data that's represented by a raster value of 2 um, and we don't have any translator or translation code for this right now it's a it's kind of an abstract data set um, value of 2 has 30,672 individual cells have that value and on down the list um, looking at the the rarest value 463 of which there's only 142 elements found um, so this is uh, this in the case of this this is a attribute table and in the case of a raster it's really just a summary of the 
is just a summary of the data set, not a complete representation. That would take tens of thousands of lines in the attribute table. Um, this are, these are a couple slides following that just illustrate how raster data looks when zoomed in and how it can be represented and visualized in a GIS. Um, raster data set as well is what is the is what we use to store image data and we have here a uh, an aerial photograph of University of Texas campus with the prominent football stadium um, in this case um, it is again a bunch of picture elements every tiny little cell in that image has a particular value a particular color in this case that when taken in total represent an image um, the last type I, I think I'm going to show you of data that's very well represented by rasters or grids they're often called is elevation data and in this case we don't have we haven't assigned a numerical scheme there is numericals involved but our representation on screen only ranks the elevations from relatively low values to relatively high values and by using this color scheme we can get an idea of the um, elevations that are uh, elevations in our study area and create something called the digital elevation model. Um, raster data sets can be um, come from various uh, sources, typically remotely sensed data that is uh, captured and captured in some way, or in some cases data that was originally in a vector format can be trans translated into a raster format, which usually involves a substantial loss of accuracy and loss of information. Um, it's also possible to create a raster data set based upon some sort of a spatial analysis, such as this hotspot analysis, which converts crime um, instances into a crime density map. Um, typically, however, the most common um, way in which raster data is created is by some sort of an image, some sort of an image analysis um, program, which converts image data into a raster data set that has some meaning. This doesn't really have each of the pixels here are only shades of gray. They don't have any meaning until those shades of gray based on a number of rules are interpreted into, uh, into a land use uh, raster or vector data set. And I think that'll be the end of this particular presentation at the moment I have to break here.